You're welcome back. We're glad to know you're still there. It's the run-up and uh, it's Christmas season. And mm. uh, while uh, we are wishing everybody a wonderful season, we're also condoling with the family of the people who lost their lives to avoidable deaths, you know, because like the case of Omobolanli, uh, the lawyer, Omobolanli Rahim, it was avoidable. But um, we have joining us uh, Mr. Banji Adekonye, who is a media, um, a legal practitioner. Uh, good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Adekonye. Good morning. Well, we also have. Let me accept this. This is which is even though on the on the rather sober note yeah. to the listeners. Okay. Thank you very much. Dr. Omoshola Deji also is a political scientist and he's also joining us. Welcome to the program, Dr. Deji. Good morning. Thank you for having me on the program. Okay. Well, um, it's unfortunate that uh, uh, the 25th of December 2022 will be remembered for the wrong, very wrong reasons by the family of uh, Omobolanli Rahim. And we're just wondering why this keeps happening over and over and over again. Let me begin with you, uh, uh, Mr. Adekonye. Uh, how is the NBA taking it from this point? Well, thank you. First of all, let me ex um, express my heartfelt condolence to the, to the bereaved family particularly the young child that is being left motherless at a time like this. Well, um, what the NBA has done so far is on point. They have taken it up with the zeal that such demands at this point in time. Let me say it, it will be, well, at least, it's on record that prior before now, a similar incident happened at that spot. So it's not as though it couldn't have been seen coming, particularly at a time like that. Could the authorities have done anything to prevent it? Yes. Did they do it? No. And we have what we have on our hands. I'm not too sure this may not happen again, even before the end of this year, in spite of the frenzy that we have out there, the outcry. But I pray it doesn't. I pray it doesn't. Uh, well, uh, but I give thumbs up to the NBA for what is being done. And I, and I believe this time around, they will, with the NBA will stay with it until justice is served. Mm. I don't hope that eventually, when the justice according to the law is served, the authorities themselves will have the courage to, to, to bring the justice to bear as appropriate. Because we have in this climate people who are in authority to sanction law, I mean, to sanction lawful judgment, shy away from it because they do not want to go down, as it were, with having signed a debt warrant if that if that is the case that, that's the, the law is the law i'm not i'm not coming to any conclusion but i'm saying if that were to be the verdict would they carry it out would they not allow sentiments to come in at this time we have a lot of people ordinarily who should have been sent back in but because these people don't want to be seen to have i mean to, to be callous or whatever you are that is your job do it that's all I have to say for now. But well done, NBA. Keep it up. Okay, Mr. Deji, I'm sure you you want to say something as well. Uh, it's an unfortunate event, uh, but it has happened. And government, in most cases, uh, find a leeway to make excuses, uh, apportioning blames to some other people. Maybe the governor will say he doesn't have powers over the police. He would have cautioned them and all that. Uh, do you think... Uh, those excuses will hold water now, and if they shouldn't, what should happen? Well, my condolence to the Rahim family about the unfortunate incident. So I can hear myself back. I don't know what. 
my condolences to the Ryan family. If the police that is supposed to protect life and property is now the one taking life of young promising Nigerians, it is a sad situation for our country. The woman has been killed and life cannot be restored. So I'm trying to imagine the impact on the family, on our children. Now, every Christmas, which is a significant day of the year, is now a day of sorrow for the family. Just because a police officer is trigger happy. And we see that every day. The impunity on the part of the police force that is meant to protect life and property. So for me, this is wrong. This should not be condoned at all. In fact, the trial of the police officer should be made public. And whatever the judge gives as a judgment, the judgment should be effected immediately. If it's death sentence, if it's life in prison, if whatever at the discretion of whichever judge handles the case. So that will serve as a deterrent to others. Because you can't just wake up in the morning and you are hoping to return to your own family and all of a sudden, because you are trigger happy, the way we use arms in this country, you see policemen everywhere you go, they are with arms, they are brandishing arms everywhere. And at the slightest provocation, they are ready to shoot or they are threatening you that they are going to shoot and nothing will happen. And indeed, how many people have been brought to book for all these excesses in this country? We have the NSAS protest. The recommendation of the panel, even in Lagos State, what has the government done to implement the report of the panel? This is one case too many. At the end of the day, is the usual approach. Government would um, issue condolences. They've arrested the police officer, promised justice, and after a while, you hear nothing. How the case goes, nobody knows. What message are they passing to the next police officer? That you can also do it, and nothing will happen. And that's why we've had a recurrence of these cases that it has been going on and on and on and on. It's sad that the police that's supposed to protect is not the one taking lives. It's a sad day. My condolences to the Ryan family. All right. Uh, let me take a cue from the last point that, you know, uh, Dr. Deji just made, made. I'm talking to you now, uh, uh, Mr. Adekoye, uh, the IGP has come out to say that he's assuring that there's going to be justice served and that everything will be done, you know, that he has ordered a speedy investigation. But these are, you know, words that we've heard over and over before. And these shootings keep happening, you know, irresponsibility on the end of the police officers. We keep seeing it every day. What, are, what actually should be expected from the police, you know, to make sure that these investigations, one, are properly carried out and that justice, because we keep hearing justice should be served, all would be served. But then if we're going to bring it to actuality, what is the actual meaning of justice being served and what should we be looking out for? Thank you very much for that question. First of all, justice here, justice according to the law, would be justice according to morality, justice according to public opinion. But here what we are looking at is justice according to the law, first and foremost. And what I say in that is this. There are three parties to this matter now. The state, the family, that the bereaved family, and then the society as a whole. And then don't forget, whatever we are saying, this, this is still an allegation. Investigation has to follow, and I'm happy that they, I mean, they're going about it I mean, expeditiously. The hearing officer luckily was apprehended at the scene, even though he has not been identified, he has not been formally, I mean, uh, named, but he's been apprehended. Um, investigations are going on and on and on like that. Time is of the essence in this case, and I hope that will be maintained. At least there's an indication of that. But we know how these things go here. 
you get to a point they will say the dpo has been transferred all those things all those i mean pranks that they play just so that we have a situation of dog does not eat dog i mean esprit the core and all of that but i know that the nba will follow this to the last letter to see that justice is gotten for her yeah. i i mean it's well sometimes some things happen and some people have to be sacrificed this is very very unfortunate i'm not happy saying this can we say it is because it is a lawyer that is involved that it is receiving this urgency i'm just asking that question knowing our society if it had been an ordinary person somebody else would we have seen this outcry and and, and all of that so maybe this is a, is a price too high to pay for us to be able to do the right thing but well let's see how you know the thing plays out but the steps that have been taken so far gives me just an iota of consolation that perhaps maybe we are going to do it right this time and then many more things will follow thereafter but then again i look at the age of the policeman involved i look at the, the length of time he has served in, we are putting in service i look at so many things we have to look at we have to have a balance he certainly is not the only policeman in that state of mind brandishing a gun he's even he i mean at that age what do you expect of even much younger officers who are brazen who are not well brought up who are ill-bred who populate the police the police force and the armed forces so um a lot of reforms need to take place and on purpose to not just haphazard it has to be let, let, let me let me let me come in here even this the the so-called higher up officers there i am not sure in my mind they have they possess the moral standing to even correct their junior officers and I say this because I, I happen to have been brought up by um, an uncle who is late now, who was in the military. He, 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 I mean, he retired as a colonel. I mean, he retired. He was among the first set of the of those who were trained in the NDA. He died last year as the patriarch of our family. I recall those days when when we are in, when you are in his company around army officers or, or personnel. And they are not handling the guns very well. He admonishes them and tells them how to carry the gun. Point it down. Don't carry it up. Don't. Let me give you an instance. It is not unlikely that this man may not have meant to show fire at the first instance. So many things could have happened. The pressure of the work, all kinds of things. You see some of these people at the end of the day, just empathize. Put yourself in their situation and see whether you can function well. I mean, in the type of jobs they do. There was a day I was driving. There, there was, there was a, there was a, a Hilux van with police men in, in front of me. I was coming behind them. I had to quickly make. I mean, I had to allow other vehicles to come in because I couldn't drive close to them. Here, these people were sitting down carelessly, carrying their guns. The guns were pointing at vehicles, and they were driving. For God's sake, anything can happen in that situation. That's how careless they can be with handling of guns. And you, you see they are, they, they are superiors. They, they, cannot, they don't even know better from my observation, I'm sorry to say. So a lot needs to be done. So much more needs to be done. Let's even thank God that that man was not allowed to flee the scene of the incident. Because if, if that had happened, I mean that could have put page to any investigation. It will it will remain inconclusive. But thank God this is not so. So what they have to do is I mean is enormous. I think so much as is, let's go back to NSAS. One of the points raising that is re police from pay these people well, make them live like human beings. 
refund them, make them happy, pay them well. But unfortunately, these were the same people whose costs, I mean, whose welfare was being canvassed in that rally, were used to go and mow them down and things like that. And we're still here, I mean, uh, arguing whether people were killed or not. People didn't even, even, people didn't even need to be killed. I'm just saying, in that situation, for us to appreciate the dire situation that we're in. Each time my daughter takes the car out, my my heart is in my mouth until she comes home. I've brought her up very well. Even some of these people, the mere appearance of good upbringing on young ones, it, it offends them. We were here on the other day. We, were, we saw the other day a young man who had just an iPhone. We saw, we, we saw the venom that was poured on him by a police officer on the road that he's worked for how many years he couldn't even afford a phone what is this young man and all kinds of things we saw the other one the other day on the long bridge here who 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 was trying into who who, who was who, who was illegally looking into a young boy's phone he resisted luckily they could have killed him so a lot has to be done it, it, everything that needs to be done has been said has been has been they, they know what to do. It is just to find the zeal and the will to carry it through. We all know what we need in this country. So I don't need to reel out whatever. They, they are there. Okay, let me, let me go to Mr. Deji, now, Dr. Deji. Um, the police, through the PPO, uh, Benjamin Hudain, has named the person, the cop that uh, was responsible. They called him Drambi Vandi. It doesn't sound Nigerian, though, but I don't know which tribe he's from. But he, the fact that he's a policeman makes him just a policeman. No, no issue of whether he's coming from one tribe or the other. But like we have said, before this incident happened, and the, the, the lawyer has pointed it out too, before this incident happened, three weeks ago, someone else was killed. And we didn't even, a lot of people who are hearing about uh, Bolan Lee right now, they didn't even hear about that boy or that young man because maybe he's not a lawyer. Now, someone has died, and like a, uh, Mr. Akinsoya said, um, maybe it's because she is a lawyer that we are hearing this. But what kind of police are, we as, are the people of Nigeria expecting? What kind of police should be beyond 2023? Because when we have the right leaders, we'll expect them also to do some reforms, like the lawyer has said. What kind of reforms do we need in the police force? to make them the police of our taste, as it were, because they are the only uh, security agencies that should take care of the civil society. Okay, maybe civil defense, maybe Peace Corps, but they mm. are the highest in that hierarchy. So what kind of a police force do we want as Nigerians so that the next people who are going to be at the helm of affairs will look into it? It was said during the answers, but maybe the presentation was not palatable enough for the political class that make the policy. So what can we begin to tell them now? That when you get into office, you need to change X, Y, Z for the police to make them better. The kind of police Nigeria wants and what politicians must do first is the reorientation of the police itself. If you pick an average police officer in Nigeria and you assess its orientation, it's so so hard, so some of them act so uncivilized, they feel like living a good life as something, maybe it's a crime. They see fashion, some of them see fashion as a crime. A well oriented police force who will carry out his duty in terms of protection of life and property. Then the training. You can't put a policeman on the job without retraining. Some of these police officers have spent 10 years on the job, 15 years on the job, without any proper retraining. They just receive orders. Go and do this, go and do that, and that's all. There must be training and retraining for each police officer to carry out his duty effectively. 
Now, the welfare and condition of Sabi. If you go to most police stations in Nigeria and you look at the environment, the condition of service is so poor. The work hours, the welfare of the police itself, a policeman that is standing under the sun that can't afford to eat three square meals and he has a gun with him. That gun will definitely push him to misbehave to the next person he sees. And that's why we have exploitation all over the place. A policeman that is living his life in dreams, he's seen iPhone, he has been hearing of iPhone. He hasn't the opportunity to use one. He wants to use one. He desires one. Maybe his wife or girlfriend is specializing him for one. And he can't afford it. What do you expect from such a police officer? So we must begin to look to see that the welfare of the police officer itself is well met. If the police officer is not protected, whether financially, whether emotionally, how do you expect such a police officer to protect the society? The police officer must first feel protected financially and every aspect of life. If the police officer cannot send his child to a good school and with the state of our public education, the police officer wants to send his child to a private school, how much is his salary? He will resort to extortion. So the welfare and condition of service of the police must be all taken care of. Then our leaders and the police top structure must look at the recruitment. Who are you recruiting into the police? How easy is it for a cultist, an armed robber, to find his way into the police force? These are important. If you don't recruit people who have the fear of God, if you don't recruit people who are passionate about the service itself, this is the kind of thing we get. Some of the people we find in police force today are not passionate about the job. They are in the force because unemployment called them into it. Imagine someone that has been unemployed for years and he sees opportunity to join the police. He sees as an escape route for unemployment. So the passion is not there. The motivation is not there. So we need to begin to check the recruitment process itself. Then another thing, the political class and the police highest hierarchy must look into is performance evaluation. How do a DPO who has not been able to resolve crime in his jurisdiction promoted to the next rank if you are a CSP, Chief Superintendent of Police, and you are a DPO, how do you get promoted to AIG when the jurisdiction, the division you are handling, there's still so much crime, there's kidnapping. So we must base promotion on performance evaluation. Look at police officers that are performing and put them into the hot spots, knowing well that they can deliver for you. So another thing is the equipment. I think we should have some equipment for the police. In other clients, it's not about gone, gone, gone. No, the, the, the equipment we use most in Nigeria is gone and tear gas. There are so many soft equipment that you can use to arrest a criminal, that you can use to cope crime, instead of gone. So the equipment part, soft equipment, because you are relating with the public. You are not a military, you are relating with the public every day. So what do you really need an AK-47 for? Except there is a crime, except you are going for a protest, then you can brandish your AK-47. But you are just going maybe on a soft patrol. You are with AK-47. A man is driving with his kids. The kids are seen gone every day. No institution in Nigeria has exposed the Nigerian kids to weapon more than the police. 
the, the, the Nigerian child is exposed to weapon, force, human rights abuse from the police every day, like they see it happen to their parents. That affects their psychology about the police. Then we need to decentralize the police. The police is over war. When you decentralize the police, we have state police, we have community police. It will help. 400,000 police officers operating on a budget whereby 96.4% goes to recurrent expenditure. 3.6% goes to capital expenditure. How do you want them to perform? 400 police officers to man a country of 200 million people where there's kidnapping, banditry, different types of crime in the community. No. We need to move beyond the centralized police system. We need to depoliticize the police force and make sure that we have state police, we have community police. By so doing, the federal police will be able to get some workload of their shelf. So, for... hello? Yes, we can yeah, hear you. Go yeah, ahead. Wrap it up. Okay, so the decentralization of the police is quite important. Then, okay, uh, I think there's been an interruption, but yes, I uh, he, he yes, I, 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 he made a, a lot of points, and one of which that he made that hit me is how that you are on a soft patrol and you have a loaded gun. Mm -hmm. I, it, it would never make sense to me because how is it even legal to have right. a loaded gun on the streets where there is no there's no um there's no chaos there's no war there's no reported crime or criminal activity yeah, maybe going they, on. maybe they go for everything they go prepared like the boy scouts will say let me play the devil's <laughs> advocate here because if there is an emergency and police has to be called yes. they will be in traffic they might not reach there on time. I don't. What is what? Yanku, what I'm is playing it? devil's advocate okay. anyway. But but he he mentions also something about evaluating the people that they are they are uh, recruiting. But mm. for someone who has been in the force for 33 years, at least he was there when things were a little bit better. Better in the sense of uh, the values people placed on lives and property, not better in, the, in terms of uh, salary. Because I'm sure this policeman must have started uh, earning maybe something lower than 20,000 or at least lower than 50,000 before getting to 33 years. So if you endured from that time till now, you just have two years to retire and you, you do this. It's not as if you're a novice, you're a new person that has come in a generation where everything goes, there are so many qualities, there are so many people being corrupted by friends and all that. You came in a time that <clears throat> at least the values were st still a little bit higher. And you're doing this now at this time. Who should be teaching the kids anyway? But I, I do have a question, I, and I'm, I want to like take it up from where I stopped in the last question about how that we've been hearing justice and we need to really understand what it what it is. Like if this investigation, let's say the investigation is brought to an end and they found they, they have their findings and this police officer is found guilty. So what kind of punishments does the law stipulate? I'm for, sure the lawyer is still standing by. Can you hear us? Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Uh, Dr. Uh, Barrister Adekoye, what, what, well, what, what kind of punishment does the law stipulate for, for instance, this uh, police officer is found guilty of, you know, this crime? What kind of punishment does the law stipulate and how long would it take to get to that point? Well, it will depend on what the, the investigation I mean, the fact is, yes, there's been a shooting. Somebody has died as a result of that. Culpability would be established. Now, whatever comes out of the... I'm, I, I don't want to... I mean, um, I don't want to uh, prejudice whatever is going to happen. In the event that murder is proved, well, um, it could be death sentence could be life imprisonment the law provides for that 
However, if it were to be manslaughter, that they, he didn't intend, that they, the, the intent was absent. It was just happenstance, manslaughter. Well, life imprisonment, long-term, you know, long-term imprisonment, I mean, could, could be what the sentence would be. It depends. So I'm not going to um, fix anything at this point in time. Let us just allow, you see, what we are out for, you see, the essence of law is that even if somebody is going to be, I mean, he, the, the, I mean, he must, the investigation must be done, he must be taken to court of for competent jurisdiction, and he must go through public trial, and then, a, 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 I mean, a, a, I mean, if he's, he's found guilty, I mean, if, if not, he'll be discharged. We don't know what will come out of it, because it is still an allegation but in the event that yes i mean the worst is confirmed well we will dance to the music if it is um if it is dead so be it so that's that's just that's, 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 that's just all i need to say at this point in time but when if eventually that is what is done of course he has a right of appeal up to the supreme court if it is affirmed that is one side of it this has to be seen to be done as well. Yeah, wait, because when, when we were discussing, she, just a moment, uh, when she, we were discussing, she was also asking, uh, uh, is it even legal for policemen to enter into a, the civil society as it is, carrying arms when there is no riot, when there is no threat to life or anything? Is it even legal by law for policemen to wield arms the way they wield it in Nigeria? You see, the police, they have what they call standard operating procedures, which they know. And our society has evolved in such a way. Look, um, as a young boy growing up, the highest I saw with policemen were batons around. Then it graduated gradually onto guns and things like that. Now, I mean, it is gone I mean, haywire. And again, um, sometimes this thing, yes, I'm sure there's a, I, mean, I cannot exactly say, I mean, what, what part of their laws, but there's something that guides them on how to, you know, handle weapons. In the situation around Blackie Bay and things like that, you and I know how quickly things can go round. So maybe it's, um, we don't even know the circumstances that got him there in the first place. We don't know. Maybe there might have been an alarm that they called them to call. We don't know. So we cannot say exactly. It is the investigation that goes on that will prove all of this. But whether they can bear arms in a civil environment, maybe yes, maybe not. Otherwise, how do you explain it when you have a party? And then they say you want you say you want to throw a party. They say okay, ah, provide security. Aside from the bouncers and things like that, you have one or two armed policemen around just to, you know, just to send the signal to the hoodlums. I'm sure you must have been at parties where, when it is six o'clock, they ask you guys to quickly hurry up that the boy, the bad boys are beginning to take. I mean, to take over in the neighborhood. You you hurriedly pack everything and you disappear from the from the venue you ask your suppliers your caterers please 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 we are leaving this place so the situation of our environment now makes it such that it is neither here nor there really but um also we in the society we have a we have a way uh, the society has programmed us such that sometimes when you are in an area you look around if you if you sight a policeman with with a gun you you, you i mean you calm down a bit so if it, the society itself primes itself up for some of these things that we see so much has happened law and order has broken down totally we must agree family is no longer what it used to be let me tell you growing up as a i mean growing up as a young boy i had a lot of um, classmates who were children of police officers. They came, I mean, we, I mean, the public primary school, police personnel and things like that. 
Let me tell you one thing. Those days, the children of the policemen were the best dressed in our school. They ironed their uniforms exceptionally. We looked up to the police sergeants and things like that to, to dress up. They dressed very well. They looked very neat. You hardly saw a policeman then carrying, I mean, spotting beard. Not the high, high not the high up. I'm talking of the, the I mean, the, the, the middle ranks, rank and file. They, they look sparkling. I'm telling you this growing up. But what do you have now? Even the so-called uh, 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 ACPs and things like that, you look at their shoes unkempt and things like that. It is sad. So these things don't even command respect in the first place. I had cause to be in the in the uh, I mean to, to to I mean to have an assignment at the police station sometime. I went to I mean to I mean I went to procure a bail for some somebody and things like that. The police officer that attended to me, I waited for him. He happens to be a graduate. From University of Ibadan. I happen to have passed through University of Ibadan too. So we got talking, of course, I, I mean, much earlier than him. So we got talking. And in the process of discussing and things like that, do you know that for his office, he had to procure his own, I passed my neighbor generator to power his office. And we went into the discussion about how the how the, uh, the the bail conditions will be packaged and things like that. Otherwise, he would not function and he has to deliver. And to, to carry this through, he has to carry it through through his junior officers who report to him. Now, at the end of the day, has he not, would he not have compromised? Would he not have lost one moral this or the other? So how would he, how would he in return supervise these people and be effective and tell them don't do this so you see the, too many militating factors okay. against okay. them to even be effective and the society too in a way we seem to be getting what we have created yeah, because monster, everything starts created. from the home what is the state of the homes now my brother the monsters we created according to them. according to burner boy um I'm glad that you gentlemen had a balance to it because everybody on the street is just angry. But it's good that there was this balance that uh, no matter what has happened, we should still look at uh, the condition of service of the policemen and all that. And NSAS actually mm -hmm. had that. But the way the policemen were the same people that were sent to shut down these young men and women who were saying what they were saying, maybe uh, in the way that was not very good. but. Um, the message was passed but this unfortunate incident has happened and we do hope that it will not happen again not on christmas not on any other day when it's avoidable so gentlemen at this point would like to say thank you to you for being a part of this program thank you for having me it's been a pleasure thank you for being thank you, there. Thank thank you for you. being there Okay, uh, so um, policemen, it's, it's no longer like it's a fashionable thing that you tell somebody in Nigeria that I've never been arrested by the police, I've never slept in a cell or anything. Mm. It's not like a fashionable thing, you are such a good person, because... You could be picked up. Yeah, just for no reason at all. Unprovoked. <laughs> so just, <for> no, <laughs> just imagine how the story you gave that someone was angry, and I've seen that a lot myself, Someone is angry that you're using a phone that he has never used. I mean, what's that your, how's that your business? There's something called resignation from the police force to come and do what the young man does if you can't do it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you have, you have your priorities, he has his. He ha you have your source of income, he, he has, has his. his. It doesn't always have to be crime for someone to be able to get a lot of things. There are things that me, I didn't think... <laughs> could give you money when I was growing up. The children of nowadays know it, and they're taking advantage of it and making more money than mm -hmm. us. So I shouldn't be jealous of a small boy who has bought a car, for instance, and I don't have a car. And I'm saying uh, all my years in broadcasting, I don't even <laughs> have a car, and you're owning a car. Unfortunately, you don't have the power to arrest anyone. Well, <laughs> would I have arrested someone? I'll pray for you and, and just make sure that anytime you're passing, I'll, I'll strategically stand where you can carry me. Mm. You know, <laughs> I'll be in your good books. But that, that's how it is. We'll just take a short break, uh, get the news out, and then when we return, we conclude.
uh, the run-up for today. Stay with us.